In the integral test, we compared the sum of a bunch of box heights to the, uh, the area under an integral, and we said, well, one is clearly always larger than the other, uh, and now we're going to take that idea of comparing two things where one is always larger than the other and do both of them for sequences instead of a sequence versus an integral. So um, we'll, we're doing a direct comparison test, and it works exactly the same for sequences and series as it did for integrals back in that other chapter when we were integrating to infinity. Um, here I've drawn the, uh, the sequences as smooth curves just because it's easier to draw and kind of gets the point across uh, more readily. Um, so if our new, if we have some new sequence that's always bigger than the original, and we'll talk in a sec how can we get that new sequence that would always be bigger than the original, uh, or how can we get a new sequence at all to compare to, to compare the original to. Um, so s suppose we're on this row, suppose the new sequence is bigger than the original, and suppose the new sequence converges, or the new series converges, what can we say um, about the original? Can we say that the original converges, or not, not sure? Well, here this is saying that the original um, sum, the original series, is less than or equal to some finite number Um, and so the, uh, the original sequence must converge as well. There's no way the original can shoot off to infinity, uh, the original sum can shoot off to infinity if it's less than some finite number. Take a look at this one. Um, what would you say here? If the new series here diverges, what can you say about the original? Think about it carefully. In that case, we're saying the original is kind of less than the new. It is less than the new, but the new is infinity. So being knowing that you're less than infinity doesn't really help because some infinities are bigger than others. So you could still be infinity even though you're less than some other infinity. So here, there's no conclusion. Um, that maybe the new is so much bigger than, like maybe the original is finite and the new is just so much bigger that its sum is infinite, or maybe the new is just twice as big as the original, and if the original was infinity, the new would all, will also be infinity. Take a second and think about this row. Think about what you can put here, what you can put there. Maybe even pause the video, write down for yourself what your thoughts are, and then what do you think? If the new is less than the original and the new con sum converges, well, maybe the new is some finite number, but the original could be way bigger than that, it could be infinity. So there's no conclusion that we can draw there. Um, and what if the new sum diverges, then the original is bigger than that infinity. Um, so the original sum is bigger than infinity, and remember there's different sizes of infinity, so we're not saying strictly bigger than infinity exactly. Um, so that means that the original sum what diverges. So um, it's a little bit complicated where sometimes we can draw a conclusion, sometimes we can't, um, but that's just how it goes. Then the other question is, um, when we have an original sequence, how do we come up with a new sequence to compare it to? Uh, and there's not always uh, only one right answer, but there's some general guidelines. Uh, so let's say these are some guidelines. We usually want to take whatever the dominant term is in the numerator and whatever the dominant term is in the denominator and ignore everything else in the numerator, ignore everything else in the denominator. So we'll say ignore all but the dominant terms and we'll say what that means in just a sec. In the numerator and denominator separately. So what does it mean to be dominant? It means grows faster than anything else. Yeah. 
and we've already talked about this in the homework, but it's good to list it again. Um, let's make a list of, um, uh, let's just say, uh, I'll do these in random order, and you can try to remember what order they go in. Uh, let's say n to a constant, um, n factorial, constant to an n, um, n to the n, and log n. So what order do those go in? Let's say which one grows fastest. And then what grows second fastest and so forth. Take a sec to think about that and remember. Uh, here we're going to say this is a constant above 1. Because if the constant is below 1, then this term shrinks rather than grows. Okay, so which of these grows fastest? Oh, I wrote n factorial twice, didn't I? Let's say n to the n. So n to the n grows fastest. Like if it's 100, then it's 100 times itself 100 times. Um, where with n factorial, all the initial values, like the 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, stay the same, and then you just multiply by 100. Here, all the terms go from 100 to 101 and 102. Uh, so that's the fastest, and then n factorial, and then constant to the n, and then n to a constant, and then log n. I wrote natural log here, but really any log. They all grow at the same rate, just multiplied by some constant. So if you see an n to the n, that's clearly the dominant term. n factorial uh, is the next dominant, you could say. Which of these relate to geometric series and which of these relate to p-series? Take a think, take take a sec to think about that. So constant to the n is like r to the n. Um, so we could say it's related to geometric. Um, and p-series is like n to the n squared, right? Like some of our some of one over n squared is a p-series. Um, Um, all right, um, where do we tend to see factorials in sequence terms? We actually saw them a bit when we were talking about Taylor polynomials. Um, so that's a reason why we're listing that there. And then n to the n hardly ever occurs, but uh, sometimes math people just like testing themselves with new, new ideas.